Hey guys, uh, it's my privilege to be able to share with you tonight, uh, even while we're online. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be sharing something that I've been sort of working through, wrestling with myself, and I think is pretty relevant to the time that we find ourselves over this last few weeks. Uh, one of my aunties uh, growing up used to come around and she was pretty uh, proper. I don't know if that's the right word, but we had to be on our best manners. She was my great auntie, great auntie Hazel. And when she came around, we had to be on our best manners and she would tell us if we were eating things the wrong way and she would give us instructions. One thing she would say is we need to, once we're finished eating our food, we to get a knife and our fork and put it on our plate and say that we had sufficient. A weird word as a, as, a, as a six-year-old. But it was saying that we were content, that we didn't need any more, that we were, we were full, we were fine. Now, I was thinking about this and this idea of being, having sufficient or being content is something that we strive for in our lives. Uh, the idea of content, this idea of a, a state of satisfaction, being happy with a situation, not desiring less or more, and being peacefully happy. Uh, I found myself during lockdown uh, often craving different sort of foods, and sometimes I just wanted just to get out of the house as well. And I was going to the shops, and uh, one great find I found was some Birdie Beetle ice creams from Audi. Fantastic. But often I found myself wanting to get more and more. Uh, I'd even, even sometimes my phone would be distracting. I would get a notification on there from the KFC app telling me that there was now I could get 10 tenders for $10. I didn't feel like I needed it before, but now I had this desire for, for, for more. I found myself going to KFC and, and getting some food. But it can be easy in our lives to always be desiring more, not being content. And so it can be in many different things. We can strive uh, whether it's uh, our grades, we want to get our grades, uh, we want to, um, in our certain relationships, statuses, there's, there's many different things. Even media, we see ads. We don't realize we need something until we actually see this ad. I uh, get sucked in by a, a, a social media ad or something and we feel like we need to buy it. And sometimes when we have this hunger for something, we think that if we get it, we'll then be satisfied, we'll be content. But often we get it and we're still feeling like, we need more. We're still, it's not like we feel satisfied. But then sometimes there's also situations, circumstances, where it seems like it's impossible to actually be content. When things are just outside of our control, uh, and we, we think, where, where, where and what can we do with that? And what I want to do is I want to share about a guy that uh, I know that uh, actually probably models this idea of being content more than any person uh, I've ever known. And this guy is actually a guy called Paul that some of you might know as well. I'm not talking about you, Paul Greer, uh, but we're talking about Paul that we can actually find in the Bible. And Paul wrote a bunch of the Bible, and uh, we're going to read from Philippians today. So I encourage you, get, grow, grab your Bible if you don't have it already, and flip open to Philippians. It's a little bit in the later part of the Bible. It's a, a, a letter, uh, nice and short, but we've been looking at this actually at church on Sundays as well. And I want to share one, a very well-known verse. Uh, and it comes from, some of you may not, some of you may not, but it comes from Philippians 4 verse 13. Maybe some of you can already recite it, but it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Great verse. You can see it on like a bookmark or like a bumper sticker of a car. Uh, it's even placed on uh, an NBA player. Steph Curry actually has basketball shoes. It's really cool that he has Philippians 4.13 written on there, the Bible verse. And if that's all that you read, we can think about it and go, that's awesome. Like, I can do anything. I can achieve anything. If I've got God on my side, it, it gives me strength. But I think sometimes this verse can be taken out of context. And I believe that context is really important. Uh, if we think about the word sorry, if I was to say sorry, or if I was to say my bad, in a lot of different contexts, that would be the same thing. Sorry for that, or my bad. But if I was to go to a funeral and then I was to say, sorry for your loss, or if I was to say, my bad, it's probably going to be taken a little bit differently. I think about it in other ways, like we've, I got a group chat with my uh, family on, on Messenger. Maybe you've got one similar on WhatsApp. There's always way too many messages. But so often things are taken out of context. There's, there's a little thing written and maybe someone's forgotten about the message above or uh, there's not enough information to understand what's actually going on. My brothers and I were talking about the Boomers and how they beat Nigeria. And mum chimed in and go, how amazing is that that the Boomers won gold? I was like, mum, it's, it's one game. 
So often we, we need uh, more of what's going on to understand it completely. And that's, uh, I think, uh, is it very important when we consider reading the Bible. It's really important to actually read what's before and what's after and hear about what's going on. To actually hear a greater meaning and understanding of, of what God's actually revealing to us in His Word. So I want to do that now with Philippians 4. And so instead of just reading verse 13, we're going to read the verse before that, which isn't sometimes always often read with it. It reads from verse 12, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Now, without context, uh, we can think this is talking about if, if uh, as a Christian, we're empowered to achieve any task because we've got God on our side. But I want to say to you today that I believe that this is actually so much more profound than just this. I believe what Paul is saying is that no matter the situation we find ourselves, through Christ, we are able to be content, to be satisfied, to be at peace and not actually always having to desire more. That in actually in every situation, we can actually get through, we can endure through God's strength and satisfaction and joy actually comes from knowing Jesus in the midst of it. The ability of a believer to actually endure hardship and persecution and not always be in that state of wanting more. And Paul actually talks about the secret to this contentment is actually a relationship with Jesus. The three C's. We can be content in Christ in all circumstances. When Paul says all circumstances, I immediately, I don't know if it's you, but I mean, think, does Paul actually mean all circumstances? Because to me, that, oh, I find my head hard to wrap around that we can be content in all circumstances. And I know sometimes in my own experience, it's, it's been hard to see that. I want to look at Paul's life and why Paul could say this, that he could be content in all circumstances. The first part, he says, whether I've been in hungry, whether hungry or in want. I know for myself, I'm often hungry. But for Paul, he was, he was often hungry because he lived in poverty sometimes for part of his life. We read of some of the other challenges in his life, in want. Uh, in 2 Corinthians, it shares about some of the incredible things that Paul had to go through. Uh, he was flogged. Uh, it says that he was beaten. He was stoned. It says that he was shipwrecked three times at least. That's ridiculous. He also had this really checkered past where he was actually part of actually hurting and actually persecuting the early Christians, even giving approval for some of them to die and that for, to be put to death. And that was what he had to deal with, those circumstances. Yet he could still be content in all circumstances. Because of his relationship with Jesus. It wasn't what uh, situation he found himself, but uh, rather the relationship that he had with Jesus was his ability to be content. And there was plenty of things in life, in Paul's life that uh, he faced uh, that were outside of his control. Similar to us, we face things like, like COVID or other things and we just think, what's going on? Something seems some way and then next minute we're, in lockdown or we're back at school or you have to be in masks, we can't play sport on the weekend and there's many things that can just cause so much stress uh, and many different things and can be overwhelming. But we can look at Paul. Paul made a deliberate choice to be content in Christ, that God was that, to be reminded that God was actually the provider of his needs. He was actually able to work through those things that he was going through. And then if we look at Paul's uh, Another part that he says is whether we are well fed or living in plenty. I know sometimes when we're actually got lots of things that it can actually be a, a struggle to be content. I remember when I first saved up and I first got one of my uh, earlier phones was a Samsung Galaxy S4. I know Samsung Galaxy S3 and I was stoked with it. But then like another month came around and then there was the Samsung Galaxy S4 was out and now I wanted that. So And then I wasn't satisfied with what I had before, wasn't content and ended up giving that to someone else and buying the new one. And sometimes this idea of when we have more, this can actually be a source of our discontent when all we are is seeking contentment from things that we have. It can be like a bottomless pit where we're always seeking other things. We're always wanting more, whether that's possessions or status or um, getting the right grades or the job. These are things aren't entirely bad, but if this is where we get our contentment from, that we can actually be a cause of dissatisfaction. We can always, we can be left wanting more. 
I wonder if you've ever felt that. You've, you've finally got that thing you wanted, but it doesn't actually satisfy you. You don't actually feel content. And often in life, we can actually seek things that are temporary rather than things that are eternal. We can think, think of things that can satisfy us for, in that moment, in that day, instead of actually our personal relationship with Jesus. And these things can sometimes actually be extra causes of stress and anxiety and, uh, outside of our contentment. But for us, uh, and, and from Paul's example, for Paul's example, it wasn't what he had or it, was, it wasn't what he, or the situation that he faced himself in, but it was rather who he found himself in, who his relationship with was with Jesus, which was actually about, uh, allowed him to have a sense of contentment. Relationship with Jesus was his secret to being content. And that was his actually source to be able to carry on. And that's how he was actually able to say, uh, it allowed him to say that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because he knew it wasn't about what he had or the situation that he faced, but it was rather who he had with him in the midst of it. And just to, just to close, I want to give just a little bit more context to this verse and what Paul's talking about. If we go back a little bit further in Philippians 4, we can read in verse 6. Uh, it's a, a, a pretty well-known passage, a, a popular passage around that you may have heard about before. But I want to share a little bit from verse 5 as well. In the Bible, it, was written in, it wasn't written with different numbers and verses that help us find things today. But it will give it a bit more context. So if you read from Philippians 4, 5 to 7, or the last part of verse 5, it says, The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your request known to God, and the peace of a peace that goes beyond all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What are we, what are we to do? How can we be content and, and look to our relationship with Jesus? Well, the first one is that God is already near. Sometimes we can miss that part about that. But it can actually help us in our anxiety and our stress knowing that God is near. A God that loves you, a God that cares for you, is with you at work in your life. Another one I want to talk about is being thankful. Being thankful in in all circumstances for what God has done for you can actually help us to be content, whether what we have or situation that we find ourselves in. Joyce Meyer has this great quote that says, while you are waiting for God to move, be a very thankful person for what God has already done for you. That when we're actually thankful, it actually helps us to be content no matter what we face ourselves in. So right now, I want you to uh, grab a pen and paper or maybe your phone and just to write down two things Uh, that you are thankful for, thankful to God for right now. So pause and do that now. Welcome back. Uh, So knowing that God is near, being thankful. Third one is to actually tell God what you need or what you want and to actually then hand it over to Him. It says that it bring things to God in prayer and petition. Petition means repeatedly. And then it says that the peace that goes beyond all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What God's saying there is that we're actually to actually give these things over to him. That if we wrestle with these things that are outside of our control, these situations that we have no idea what to do, that we can actually give them to him. That he can actually provide a peace to actually allow us to be content in any situation. Which is crazy to wrap your head around. So again, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to pause this video uh, and I want you to write out one thing right at the moment that maybe you're feeling outside of your control. Maybe something that's giving you a bit of Uh, anxiousness or stress and to actually stop hand that over to God write it down and to give a quick prayer to him all right pause it now all right coming back uh I think it's such an important thing is sometimes it's just to actually speak things out or write things out uh, to be constant in in, uh, reminding yourself what you're thankful for and to actually physically hand things over write things in a bit of paper maybe even throw it in the bin acknowledging that you're handing that over to him but we can search in many places for our idea of content, being content, and whether it's uh, things we have or even finding it hard to be content in the situations that we face. But it's not about what we have, what we um, find ourselves in, but rather who we have with us. And that was such a, um, a pillar and a block for Paul's life, and it can be for ours as well. So I want to encourage you today to, to think through what it could look like um, to, to actually maybe for the first time to start a relationship with Jesus maybe to continue to pursue him and to actually be able to experience his peace, to actually be content no matter where we find ourselves.
So I'm going to stop and I'd love just to pray for you right now before we get into an opportunity to chat through some questions with your small group. Let's pray. God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for how you're at work in our lives that you are near. I thank you that no matter what we are going through, what we have, that you can actually be our source of contentment, that we can actually rely on you to be the provider of everything we have. Thank you that you love and that you care for us. Help us to pursue you in everything we do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, guys, it's been awesome to share with you tonight. I encourage you to get into small groups, ask some questions, uh, and really looking forward to hopefully seeing you in person next week. Thanks, guys.